Welcome back. Team Liquid are at match point. I'm joined by Kobe here. Uh, what's your what's your updated take on the claws? Uh, I think that was when you're playing Smolder, you just spit fire on him. Spit fire and then we win, okay? Just keep doing that. So, Smolder ban, uh, I think, comes back. I'm a fan, yeah? yeah same, same. It, I said it before, but it feels so bad when you're like, okay, for this one game, we're dropping the Smolder ban into Smolder just so, terrorizing. They, they definitely, because, you know, with the replays that we went over, yes. 100 Thieves definitely could have won that game. Yeah. They could have won that game if some decisions were different, if some play was different. Um, and not allow it to get to the smolder point. Yes. But I'm like, I'm just so frustrated that that point exists. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I, I would like it to not exist. And uh, we just go go back on the bands. The Vagar, I think, is really big for Quid, though. I think it is, uh, has been a really useful answer in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they keep that one around. Team Liquid might want to address the Kai'Sa just a little bit because it's doing really well, and or at least Meech is performing really well on it. I think the team fights, it works with their comp. Oh my, I was so frustrated when he ulted over the Baron wall and oh, left yeah. to try and kill the Jax that and hurts. left the rest of the team. Oh, yeah, that was so close because he was he was playing so well for, for multiple games in a row, but mm -hmm. uh, one of these critical Baron fights and Game is just out of your reach. There it is. Smolder. There it is. Goodbye. Right back on the bench, you can hear the, the fans, the crowd. Do Did not they just turn that up in smolder. our ears? That yeah. was <laughs> that were, was massive. They were excited for the smolder man. And the crowd goes wild. Whoa! <laughs> All right, and they answer with the Kaisa one. All right, fair is fair. Getting it out. Meech, yep. Meech, is, Meech has been a problem. Or Team Liquid. This is the one series where it's just the most AD carry bans. Because at least it started this series with 100 Thieves, three banning ADs. Yeah. Now we're seeing Team Liquid follow up with the Kai'Sa. I mean, you know, Senna was already banned on the prior one, but it's going to be a little harder. We saw Jinx finally poke her head out just uh -huh. because of these bans, so we might see a return to Jinx. I like this, though, sticking with Talia. To me, it's either Talia or Ari here for 100 mm. Thieves. Uh, and they don't, they, I don't think they're scared of APA Ari, but they have shown that they've already been punished by APA Talia, so this is probably the, the better choice, even though Quid is a massive, massive Ari player. Um, and the Talia is obviously also a flex pick, so it doesn't pigeonhole them into it have to being Quids. Yeah, and Team Liquid have done this draft before where they go Zyra Khan and a three pick Ziggs. I think they want to be able to see a little bit more of 100 Thieves draft before they pigeonhole themselves into a Ziggs. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Weaver's Wall has done its job to isolate a little bit of what Ziggs can do, but then he just chucks that nuke. It doesn't really matter. So that's my concern. So many teams have said we can play against it and we're just wrong. It feels like any time there has some, been somebody that's been infinitely better on one champion than the rest of his pool, or just like a really strong champion in the meta. Teams have been like, yeah, we could take it. Ooh, are we gonna get some Lulu? Some uh, some Aphelios Lulu after, the, really after nice. the buff? Um, but yeah, I mean, Team Liquid, they've been slamming the Kaiser Rakan 1-2 pretty much every single game. What is, okay, Renata. It's interesting, yeah, because Team Liquid have also gone with a lot of, you know, that long range and counter engage. Yeah. So 100 Thieves this time around, looks like they're gonna get a little bit of protection too. I'm always a really big fan of Renata with the Felios also. Uh, you just have so many options yourself for counter engage now, Talia Rocks and Renata Ultimate. Looks like it's gonna be kind of flexible. Yeah, the counter engage is quite nice. It looks like they're trying to drop top lane to 4-5. Team Liquid's probably just gonna go for a Ziggs here anyways. Or just like a, a or, mid lane. Oh! Yeah, another APA classic. Farm it up. How do you feel about the Aurelian's old blind? Farm it up. Uh, for APA, it's actually been, like he hasn't been punished super hard. Yeah. Usually I would not like uh, uh, the Aurelian soul considering Talia could still be flexed, but it, for APA, it's it's the go-to. His Ziggs and his Aesol have been it. Yeah, he's been really willing to pick it early on in the draft. And yes, I say blind, yeah, you, as you mentioned, just because it could be a Talia flex. Um, Top lane bans have been the, the story of second phase, though. Also, the Aurelian Soul, the more I look at it, it is really good versus Aphelios. It is non-committal, and you can just drop the star on his head. Aphelios has issues with those types of, of long-range setups. If you get hit with an Aurelian Soul star, then Rakan locks you up. Uh, I, I really actually like this, um, the more I consider. 
Oh, we got an Australian out there, at least an Australian appreciator. Um, so respect to that guy. Yeah, Spooks right there, the uh, the assistant coach on 100 Thieves. Back to batch coach of the split for him. Uh -huh. Previously on Golden Guardians, now on 100 Thieves. Um, something to take note of what Team Liquid does really well. Uh, we saw this during their Dignitas series where I think they know how to really pile up CC well around Aurelian Soul. When, I remember that one fight that happened around Botside River where it was like Rel ulti into yeah. Aurelian Soul ulti and then they just get a double kill off that one. Now they have the, the Rakan ult, so they do have decent setup. It's just going to be hard to mention, as you mentioned, dive into the Renata. Yeah. Um, Renata and Talia can sometimes pose a difficulty there. Yeah. TL also ban the poppy to ban another one of those counter engage uh, like dash stoppers poppy is so annoying for the recon it's just a renekton four is it not for team liquid uh wonder what hundred thieves are going to pick into it but hmm i'm the wukong has been coming back but it's a little okay never mind yeah, we'll, we'll wait till the till the swaps continue but just just keeping impact to have his counter pick here Grab some some sort of jungle. I guess they're also mm -hmm. afraid of Rumble that's still available but hasn't been picked. But both top laners have shown the willingness to pick oh. it. That's a Yone pick. So it is a Talia uh, jungle, a Renekton top, and a Yone mid. <laughs> what? <laughs> Courage. <laughs> Courage, a.k.a. Quid's son. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Quid looking to make his son proud in this one. Slamming the Yone down. I love it. Into the Aurelian soul here. That thing can cause so many problems. Wait a second. No way. Are we going to get a it. Shen? Oh. Plenty Man, there were recent Shen buffs too. I was hoping we'd get Shen back because it's such an interesting champ with the with the global plus the dueling power. Yeah. But uh, we go into the Gragas here. Go into the Gragas instead. Definitely a lot more of a nullifying top, top lane pick. Uh, into Sniper's Renekton. Hopefully, Impact, for his sake, doesn't get solo killed anymore, or, or he's never gonna hear the end of it. Fingers crossed, which one do you prefer more? Which comp? I gotta go with the Yone. I'm, I'm a big Yone fan, but I, I know that Team Liquid just won a game by scaling, so... Okay. Well, I'm interested. Let's hear from the casters, guys. Which one do you prefer? Thank you, Raz and Kobe. What do you guys think? I like the flex pick from 100 Thieves. Yeah. I like the counter engage they have with Renata, but then I also just like the fact that Talia is not defeated in this series. I think TL locked in the A soul because they're like, oh, cool, we can have the matchup we want. Mm -hmm. And then it gets flexed to Yone. So if 100 Thieves win, I think it's going to be a big reason would be quit. We talked about how 100 Thieves, and I know they talked about on the lounge as well, how 100 Thieves did have opportunities to win that game smolder aside, right? Um, and this is another game, once again, where I feel like they have all of the tools they want to succeed. I do like that last minute flex for Quid's Yone, something that he really has looked great on. Uh, but on the side of TL, they're completely in their comfort zone too, right? Yeah. Like this is a comp that they'll be completely comfortable piloting. We've already seen the Zion recon from them. Core is having a sneakily good day after having like what I would say is a continuation of kind of a downward slide a little bit towards the end of his career. I thought his recon in particular was I'll really push good. back a little bit because I thought last summer he was actually really, really good. Okay. But other than that, yeah. I'm with you. I feel this, like he's been... This season, yeah. I would say, is really the, the last two splits, yeah. For sure. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a really fun game. I mean, I think I think Quinn and APA, these are the two champions that kind of exemplify the playstyles that I think these guys are best at. It's Quid on a champion that has the ability to make plays. It's APA on a champion that can kind of neutralize the lane, that mm -hmm. can farm up, and that can put out a lot of damage in team fights. And the um Lee Sin, which has been a pick that's been banned this entire series, as well as the... Uh, umpty timer we've had in the first three <laughs> games of before four minutes he's going to invade the enemy jungle we'll have to track that all right we got kobe standing by with tl coach spawn thank you isaac i'm here with jake spawn tabiri how are you happy with the draft you've been slamming the zaya uh plus recon and they're face checking right now yeah i mean i'm pretty happy with the draft to be honest i think that this time around however they're playing much more of what they played earlier in the playoffs like a little bit more lane pride a little bit more uh play for early fights so i think as long as we get through relatively unscathed which we are not right now uh then it will be okay so uh you just won a game scaling with one of the dragons uh decided since smolder's banned we're gonna go with apa's dragon uh are you worried about the yone slam at all uh, yeah, a little bit. Obviously, last time we uh, took our mid early and they had Talia, we banned Yone. Uh, we, but we thought Talia was actually a better mid lane pick for them. So, 
kind of trying to incentivize getting it out of the <laughs> mid lane, you know, uh, which we did. So now we just, you know, we hold on for dear life in the early game and we see how late game goes. All right. Number one most important thing in the early game for you to survive. What is it? Uh, not giving kills to the Yone. <laughs> All right, there you go. Casters, take it away. We'll see if they can succeed there, but rough start in level one for the bot lane. All three pots gone level one, didn't force a single one out there. As Meech getting a lot of use out of that plate footwork move speed, plus the sniper gun, was able to kind of just walk them down. You could see Spawn's face as it's happening. It's <laughs> like, we just need to get through the early game, which we're not doing right <laughs> now. Uh, as we see all lanes, uh, 100 Thieves have taken control over that box. The life of a coach is not an easy one. <laughs> it's a weak role, man. <laughs> coach needs to be buffed this patch? Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like, a lot of times you're just going with what the guys want to play anyway, and then once you're in game, like, they're the ones pressing all the buttons. You can't be like, Damn. look out for the gank bot. Like, no, they just have to know that for themselves. Coach sucks. Are you, are you sitting there at your computer, like, mimicking, like, oh, man, I'm going to... I'm gonna do this ability like your your yeah, hand like is was, over there. If the I was in there with Udi, QWR, <laughs> you're all set. We don't need to get into this too much, but I'll say <laughs> the best thing a coach can do is not lose the game because That's it's true. really the weakest of the six by far. Mm. I Just would agree. Just win, forehead. Yeah. All right. Sounds well. good to me. Early base here from me. But Spawn, okay, this is not a, this is not a, a flame. Spawn is a really good coach. Like I think he's actually really competent. He's been all the way through academy. Both these guys have uh, as well, and they consistently met each other Wait, in why, finals. Why would that be flame? <laughs> yeah, That's just a straight up compliment. I, because I just flamed the role. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you're like, this is not flame. He's a great guy. Yeah. He's a stand up guy. Spawn, you know, you're knows so great. everything no about flame. the game. His drafting is solid. <laughs> not flame. <laughs> Uh. All right, well, Umpty hovering around mid lane here. He's got an absolute comfort pick. Most played for him as Quid's going to step forward there with the soul unbound. Good sidestep on the Q from Umpty, but Umpty going to ward hop in and does use a safeguard to protect APA a little bit. Now they're just going to help him to reset this wave. And while River will continue farming, he's just going to be over on the Raptors for now. And I do wonder if this game is going to be significantly slower than the first game, three games we've, we've seen so far. As an update, the combined kills per minute in this series is 1.19, which is absurdly high. And just because game one was so fast, it's gonna be hard to set reset the LCS record for most kills in an overall five game series. But we've had 24 kills in game one, 44 kills in game two, 50 kills in game three, and would need 44 kills per game throughout the next two to break the LCS record the Team Liquid and FlyQuest set in their series. Based on these comps, I don't think that's likely since we yeah. do know the Team Liquid really just want to sit back and scale, but you never know once these teams get into the mud. Yeah, TO want to sit back and scale, and I think it's this is the first time we haven't really seen Umti go for a super invade. Yeah. Instead, he goes mid, helps his mid get a better reset, which is really, really important in this matchup. Uh, Spawn talked about how worried they were for Quid's Yone uh, with that flex pick coming late in draft. Um, and I think it's going to look a lot more like game one, where then yeah. suddenly the game is going to explode. I think that's a real possibility, but I'm also really interested to see like how good 100 Thieves is at accelerating this specific game because mm -hmm. I'd say game two was the weird one for me where Team Liquid with like the Zig Zaya was constantly diving into 100 Thieves. Like it's been Team Liquid that has engaged at least half of these fights. And now that only one team wants to engage, it's a test because it's not like there's this handshake agreement that we all want to fight all the time. You actually have to get your correct setup. TL is not going to give it to them. Yeah, and there's not really a lot of like guaranteed engage, shall we say, over on the 100 Thieves side, right? Mm -hmm. So they're the team that wants to push the pace, but it's got to be, you know, a flank from Sniper or it's got to be an engage from Quid. There's not that easy go button uh, that is going to make things happen. But there goes Kors. He's going to be able to step forward. Ayla gets caught. The Ignite is down and Umti is coming around the side. It's time to run here. The Sonic Wave can be blocked by Meech and that'll be the end of it. Good job by there by Meech recognizing I'm full health. He can't actually finish me off. Ayla's the only one in danger. Two summoner spells burned, so could make a repeat, but the two least important summoner spells burned, Meech and Ayla, both will still retain their flashes. And a lot of times you'd hope that gank could chunk someone low enough that you get Drake control. Nope, not the case. He actually has to just path all the way up. Really just babysit APA. Perfect timing on that. Uh, gonna go in with the ulti, so it is just a trade. His umpty again is covering him, and in these kind of matchups, especially with the popularized builds for Asol now, where they're just rushing straight Landry's, not building mana items, yeah. you actually do need help resetting your wave because mana can be a significant issue for this champion when you're not building a lush after or anything like that. Umpty should be able to just back out of there. 
Yeah, and one thing I do think was important about that little bot lane gank that we saw coming from Umpty is that it did allow them to push out this wave a little bit, mm. look up river, um, and kind of reset, take a little bit of the pressure off so they're not constantly slammed up against their turret. It would also give them, if they want, if 100 Thieves go down towards Drake, it gives them at least some rotation to know what's happening. That's been kind of just this trade of pressure as mm -hmm. Lee stepping forward because Lee Sin obviously is spending more time covering, but we saw yeah. River spending that time farming, taking yep. the three grubs as well. As Core going to get pulled back by the handshake. No flash force, stays calm, and he's going to be able to just walk it out. And I gotta say, like, this is a game from Umpty that's gonna require a lot of strong mental. I know for pro junglers, when their team has zero lanes that can get their own push organically, it feels unplayable. <laughs> because every time you go for a gank, there's a good chance you're warded, and there's a good chance the other lane would win a 3v3 or a 2v2. So the fact that we haven't had a kill so far is actually a big accomplishment by Team Liquid. Also worth noting the impact had pushed on top side, took that time, walked down, got a ward over on the enemy blue buff, which gave him the intel that likely River's going to be bot side, he's not top, so uh, we're able to back it out, and it's going to be Umti actually starting this dragon off. Oh man, if but... they get this Drake, it's it's robbery, and I that, think they're actually going to get it. I think they're going to get it with the way those resets happen from 100 Thieves bot lane. Yeah, and TL, again, we've talked about their kind of like what makes a macro focus or like what makes them better than 100 Thieves going into this matchup with how they see the map. It is setups around objectives like this and making the most of the resets that the enemy team gives you. You have to look up at top lane as well. Sniper actually getting pretty low off a couple of these trades. Uh, as, he, as he'll back up a little bit, pop some potions. Quid going to be looking with the soul unbound. Does find the knockup onto APA. He's going to get knocked out, but Core is here. Sniper getting very low, but in comes River. Can they find the setup there? There's the stun, there's the seismic shove. Impact, no way out, will go down. First blood claimed by River. Really nicely done. Impact, no flash from an earlier fight. And Sniper will want to open that up. I mean, the fact that they're going to have that Renekton for the next spawn of Grubs, for like the Rift Herald, they're really going to have an opportunity to Go back to mid lane, oh. though. Fate is sealed. APA in trouble. The tower oh. shots will not be enough. Wow. And it's a solo for Quid. Coming up huge in the mid lane. Umpty going to go for it. Caught by the handshake. Here's the hostile takeover. Has to flash out of there. Cleanse Force as well. TL really trying to get something on the bot side here. But the CS advantage is so small. Now they're stepping forward. Yon could be in trouble. They're looking for Meech. In goes Umpty. There's the kick. There's the bailout. It's going to expire. Down goes Meech. And now Ayla's in trouble. TL can just wait. Reset this core. Needs to pull aggro. He's going to do it with the ulti. Now just step out of range. Nicely executed on the redive there from TL. They felt the pressure to make something happen on the bot side after a kill in mid and a kill in top. And they were able to get it done. Yeah, and you could see how they were setting up for that bot side play coming out of the Drake. As we relive this solo kill, we see exactly why uh, they were so concerned about this Yone. Um, and again, this is some this play on bot is something that they've been setting up since the Drake take. You saw them placing the vision down to kind of take complete control of this bot side. Yeah, and I think it is honestly though, very greedy by 100 Thieves to step up and take this 2v2 when Lee Sin is right next to them. They were only losing about three additional minions. They could have waited for Quid to walk down and they had just gained advantages in both the top and the mid lane. They were so primed to run away <laughs> with two of the lanes and only be slightly behind the bot lane. But I think now Team Liquid might have a window to bridge towards the end of the game. They burned both summoners from Meech. They can continue to target him. And Yawn has the opportunity to get very strong now. And we'll see if he's gonna be able to do it because he's gonna need to. Uh, Squid is gonna be putting on a lot of pressure. Up a good 20 CS mid lane, got a solo kill, took a plate, and that's even with MT making multiple trips to mid lane mm -hmm. to yeah. try to help APA reset that wave. I'd say maybe the best game Quid played in the spring split was when they flexed the Aatrox mid lane yeah. to play against Insanity's Scion. And obviously a lot of players can play flex picks and you can get counter picks, but it just seems to be extremely effective for Quid when they have the Talia, they set up this counter pick and he's poised to really take over this game. He already 1v1 solo killed the Ace Soul Endress turret. He's 20 CS up and I really want to see what Quid can do with this advantage. Yeah, as we see River covering towards the boss side and Umti looking for something mid now on Quid. There's the kick. We'll see if they can find it. Falling Star comes through. It does connect. The stun is there. Sonic Wave, Resonating Strike, not going to be enough damage. Quid uses his Fate of Seal to get out, plus the Flash. So nice little attempt. Doesn't cost TL too much. 
I mean, it did it did cost them the two ultimates, but if it can actually give them a window into picking up these grubs and denying the six grubs from Hunter mm -hmm. Thieves, it would be more than worth it because they only had to sack a little bit of bot lane pressure to make that happen. Yeah, MT is They're gonna MT. They got the one. Five to one. Yep. Not a total disaster. <laughs> True. I mean, it's actually pretty important. The difference between the five and six, the double <laughs> void might spawn is big, but River's coming up here. I believe he has that ulti ready, so Weaver's Wall could come through. Quid and River are looking, but gonna elect to just go for that red buff instead as Ayla had made a move up towards them and Umti now spots that River is on this. Don't think he's gonna wanna take that in as it would be a bit dangerous. The red's just gonna be secured by River and should be an easy exit. Yeah, as we see Ayla looking mid the thing that's really impressive coming out from tl is how much vision they do have around the spot side oh, wow. um and we'll see whether they'll be able to make the most of that to potentially set up a turret dive i mean or just control this drake they already got the first drake and they can buy themselves a ton of time if they get the first oh ayla's yep. spotted them he sees them i thought he might have looked for a go there I'm back to mid lane, Soul Unbound, APA going to take the bad end of another trade here. Oh. As MT will steal the right away, so it is red for red, but he gets the flash on top, and that has got to feel good. Ayla stepping forward, Handshake going to connect on Dion. Should be able to just walk it out. And it's Core JJ is back, and that narrowly missed on River. Not that I think he would have taken it. Yeah, really trying to put the pressure on this bottom lane, buy time for APA and Impact to scale up. They haven't lost those lanes that badly, 10 CS and 30 CS plus. <laughs> A death on both of them, but the overall game being the second one sounded kind of bad. 10 CS didn't sound so bad. <laughs> yeah. Like 10 CS, I'm like, okay, I'm with you. Like 30 CS, a solo kill and play. Yeah, not that bad. It's just a matchup. We're scaling. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so here's the question: like, I really haven't seen that much ace, many ASOL Gragas Lee Sin comps. Like, does that really scale that much better than Talia, Renekton, Yone? I think it is somewhat close like i think overall hundred thieves is primed for a pretty successful game i think the one thing i will say is there's a lot of pressure on quid and when you're going in as that primary engage you don't have something to really follow up on as much yeah if you go in and you get cc'd by core you know body slammed and so on by impact you could get 100 to zero and that's where i think it, you know the ease of execution is yeah. they're much more on the side of tl uh Julia scales really really well yone scales really really well exactly. but is it going to be as easy to get done what they have to get done that's my yeah. question that was what i was going to say is to Azale's point i think it's the ease of execution in terms of how the composition works and how they can set up around objectives is really good and but the easy execution of yon just getting a bunch of gold as well is uh and also probably getting this first turret as the CS. To go for the rift herald this bot lane is is massive for tl mm -hmm. And yeah, they've had complete Drake control as well, which again, we were talking about like, okay, what are some ways that they end up getting through the mid game? Well, forcing the other team to fight them constantly at Drake, being able to have that set up on bot side is one of those ways. And it's also worth noting, it is going to be Stridebreaker Rush here for Sniper, something a little bit less common, but does have that additional slow in. Uh, can be nice against some of these more slippery champions over on the other side. And it's going to be Blade of the Rune King here for Quid. Uh, we'll see where he wants to go second, but... Fork and IE uh, is pretty common these days and can allow you to be a really strong side laner, especially if you're going to be matching up against Gragas, who obviously is building yeah. a lot of health. And I think Sniper getting all pro third team in his rookie split, and then Quid and River getting all pro first team speak to the way 100 Thieves have won games throughout the regular season. They had such a surprisingly dominant regular season going 10 and 4, getting the number two seed. Yet here they are now, one game from elimination against Team Liquid, needing to press the go button. And honestly, this game is kind of going how they would want it to go. Sniper's ahead, Quid's ahead, mm -hmm. River's ahead. They have the opportunity to make plays. They just have to execute now in the big moments because being down two drakes and only being up 700 gold does put the pressure on those top three to really play well and i think that big moment might be this next dragon right because the first two did go to tl if you give up three dragons in a row it could TL be pretty TP tough here river behind is behind him. him it's gonna be a flash forward there's the seismic shove in the combo is there apa trying to get out of there he's got almost no health he turns around and he just breathes down fire on the sniper and now River in trouble. He's got a blast cone, but I don't know that that's getting you out of there. We'll see the if they can get one. anything back. There's the kick on to Yone, and Yone is just gone. The only fate he sealed was his own as he went in with that ult. Yeah, as we see APA TPing up after that to catch topside wave again. Uh, TL are this team they are dead. so. Thank you, Chad. 
Well, it's just a little bit unlucky that I did this whole monologue in their top About side. About the top side, and now all they're all three dead. of them die immediately after. That's so disastrous for their state in this game. APA didn't even die during that. No. Coach yeah. Liquid, and now you're cursing and the other no. team. I'm curious. I do what I can. <laughs> Jet. Five, five head level, please. So you're saying coach is the worst role, but where does caster <laughs> rank in that? How much effect are you having here, chat? Caster curses are way too OP. <laughs> I don't understand it. I never have, but it's true. What do you have to say for yourself now that you've yeah. cursed the entire 100 Thieves top side? I'm sorry to the 100 Thieves fans, but I'll just say, like, if you're not making a comeback, like, is it even worth it? You want to be able to earn your way. <laughs> like, think about how much more exciting it'll be now if they can overcome this deficit True. in game four and still win game five. Think of the momentum they'll have for the rest of the playoffs. It's going to be Ayla riding this one in. Tokyo Drift's going to juke is, him out. Where he's he going, going to top lane. He realizes oh, yeah. he can just die there, so he's just yeah, going to yeah. run this up to the top. I actually like this. They're going to get top turret. Yeah, right they're going to get yeah. top tower. I don't yeah. know if he's going to reach all the way. I think it's going to expire. Oh. So you do lose the health, unfortunately, but the charge will still go off. So they're going to get the tier one. I actually think that was clever. I uh, realized that there was kind of an overload of members there. <laughs> As this is weird, it didn't even elect charge. I guess there's a little mini cooldown, I think, after you use it. Yep. Going to be going soul unbound onto impact. Um, but we've seen some pretty clever plays. Was it XU last week who did the crazy drift yeah. from mid down to bottom yeah. to hit the tower? That's the coolest one I've I've seen in the LCS for sure, but this was maybe a close second. Yeah, I like it when you break the mid turret and then drive through the jungle yeah, with the bot turret. Yeah, that's the best one. one. That one's definitely really nice. This one is like you swerved off the road into the ditch. Like you didn't die <laughs> but or you didn't your hit car. the deer that was on the road. Exactly, but you're yeah. like side you're of your still car's alive. a little scuffed up. Like it's yeah. not the ideal yeah. use of your, your rift tail. There you go. But it's something. Yeah. He drove it. Yep. <laughs> And you got to say, we checked in on APA a while ago, was down 30 CS. Things have stabilized. And this is kind of one of the difficulties about champions like Asol, about champions like Ziggs, is you hit this certain point in the game where all of a sudden the wave just instantly dies. And yeah. then it becomes very difficult to interact with them. He's no longer as limited by his mana. Yeah. And I think uh, as we see TL once again setting up for this Drake off of 100 Thieves reset, they should have complete control over this bot side of the map still. Uh, although Quid should rotate up to be able to push out this bot side wave. And I do think that because of how far behind Meech and Ayla are, it's relatively difficult for them to get pressure. But like the one thing here is they have pushed this bot side. Mm -hmm. So they have the ability to maybe flank when this dragon happens. And I think giving over this third Drake is really risky for Hunter Thieves. But at the same time, yeah. if they lose this fight badly, the timing sets up that would also oh, be very well coming in. They're going to try to go for Yawn. APA is going to get flicked back. APA is in trouble, but it's impact in the back line, disengaging the fight. The Falling Star is coming down. It's going to be River falling already. Sniper trying to fight his way out of this, but Ayla has gone. River has gone. Quid just now arriving. It looked like that was a fight that they were trying to pick, but Quid was nowhere nearby. They yeah, just the, seem out of sync. Yeah, the most important thing is that Quid wasn't there as he goes on to Umpty. Yeah, Quid going in on Umpty. They get the okay. shutdown as he gets stunned up and the soul unbound does help them to get that kill. So both teams without a jungler now, but it's Umpty with a larger respawn. Flashing in his impact. He's going to go for the body slam, but it might just deliver a bag of gold to the opposing team. Fate is sealed, oh. but it's TL falling. Yawn stepping forward. Meech is gone, so they do battle back, and now the resets come through. The dragon takes flight, and he's looking for Sniper. Won't be able to get him, but Quid gets a couple back as TL gets sloppy towards the end of that fight. Absolute bloodbath, and actually Quid wants to finish the job. He still has Flash, he's teleported behind them. At the very least, they want to push them out he's so looking, they can get that Drake. Looking, has a Q3, nice side step from Yawn, but I don't think it even matters. No, it oh! does! Just barely survives. The calculations weren't quite there. APA will fall, but it does cost them the Flash, and it means they will grab the Dragon. So that is critical. At the end of the day, back and forth, very scrappy. But TL, don't walk away with the Dragon that they were coming for. Yeah, it's so important for 100 Thieves to be able to stop that Drake stacking. And now you see why they always want to fight with Quid, right? Mm -hmm. Because, again, one of the big things that goes wrong initially with River going in, and Jack, you pointed out how they're still in sync, is that Quid is. Quid is still yeah. all the way down on this side of the map, still rotating up to the fight. And Sniper, by the time he does damage, two people on his team are dead. And this is, Team Liquid got so confident off of this, because, again, if they're playing this game optimally, they just take the third Drake, and it might be over. But going in, 700 gold onto Sniper there for killing Umpty, and then yeah. the additional kills they picked up as Team Liquid kind of doubles down on fighting in the mid lane since their jungler is dead. 
keep them in this game. That, in, that initiation could have been the season over for 100 Thieves, but now we're very much in the thick of things. Only 300 gold the difference. Sniper actually going to kill this turret and give them a slight gold lead and only a one dragon deficit. And these fights are so scrappy with multiple members kind of escaping with slivers of health, um, which has been kind of a hallmark of this entire series. Um, I do definitely think, again, we were talking about ease of execution. It's pretty easy to pick off people. I, I think TL has better ease of execution, but obviously if 100 Thieves are going to make picks and TL make themselves available, I think Quid is already a massive, massive problem in this game. I think he is as well. I think maybe a bigger problem, though, would be this four kill Zaya. Mm -hmm. Yon has had such a strong playoffs. He had 51 kills last week alone. He's had an early game advantage in most of the games this series, and he is poised to carry Team Liquid to finals weekend if he can protect this lead. I think the things he definitely needs to watch out for is just any Wombo combo. Oh, he's star yes. coming down, and they've caught Ayla. We'll see if he can find any way out of this. Doesn't look like it. He's going to be charmed up, but Sniper TP's into the back line. Ayla's still alive. There's the kick flash. It's onto River, but there's not any follow-up until just now. River is down, but Sniper oh. is going to get caught. He's going to get caught by the Blade Caller. Yawn has a perfect one, but he's shut down by Sniper as he survives the onslaught. He gets into the back line. It's up to APA now. He flashes forward. He's going to be able to get a big shut down there, and now gets the resets flying forward he's looking for quit but he's gonna be rooted by beach and he's gonna be finished off but on the other side impact to numpty they get one too and now they're hunting for meach they have to be careful though meach is full health he doesn't have his summoners they gotta do this perfectly if they botch the engage it could go bad for him oh, stepping man. forward there's the body slam and now the cc comes in no way out for meach well executed by tl these fights are being decided <laughs> on such slim margins. You could see the trepidation with Core JJ not wanting to over-engage, knowing that the bailout was going to come at one point, Renata. And then Hunter Thieves used that to buy time for the teleport to come in. And I really want to watch Gon on the back end of this fight because he buys so much time and does so much damage. Yeah, Zaya inherently a champion that just has so much escape on her own, oh. gets the play color root there uh and even though they are able to shut him down then apa is still a massive damage problem uh and impact and core constantly have cc for him and at the tail end of this fight quit getting the huge burst of damage so meets can pick up a soul is important but i think what's more important is the summoner spell usage like no flash on apa mm -hmm. still a timer for yon's flash so if 100 thieves could find a way to go fast, although I don't really feel like they have a good way to set up. That would be a window for them to get something done. And Meech just now got his summoners back, so that's going to be big on yeah. the other side. We'll see if they can find any sort of an opportunity to get it done. I think you have to be looking at Quid for that, though, and right now he's sitting bot lane, so not much of an angle thus far. Next Dragon going to be up here in about a minute, and both teams will look towards controlling mid, trying to get vision in that area. I just love this series, man. Yeah. We were saying like, time. ah, they got this scaling comp. It's going to be really slow. And then here Ooh. we go. 21 kills in 24 minutes already with no sign of slowing down. It just feels like the fights are accelerating. Umpty. Umpty's going to have to get out of there. Is there at the Weaver's Wall? APA is caught. He's going to be stunned up by that. Yes. He's going to be flicked okay. back. And APA's got no way out. The Falling Star finds a little bit of time. Immediate pings, though, onto Baron. They're going to try to look for it. Yeah, and the shutdown went to Meech, right? So suddenly mm -hmm. this Aphelios could also be a problem. And 100 Thieves, I think is, I think they're willing to flip it. Sniper going forward, going to be able to force out the Feathers, throwing the Blade Caller, could be there to follow it up. Not going to find the angle onto Sniper to root him off that. Now that you force the ulti on Eon, the turn is so easy. That's the big thing. Even if he does have his flash up, it's really hard for them to approach this fight. They got white red. That usually means don't fight. It's but up to Quid, though. going to have to do it. Quid has flash and ult, and he's going to be the key member here. We'll see if he can find Yon. He's going to look now. There's the knock up. He's going to get CC'd, though, and he might just get burst down. Ooh. He tries to go with the Vader seal, but it's flash, and the bailout will not be enough. Ooh. Quid wow. has fallen on the other side, and all the TL members still in their bodies. And flash, they caught Meech, but he's going to be flashing over the wall to safety. Sniper hovering, trying to look for an angle here on Yon. Yon has the cleanse back, I think. Ooh. No, it must still be on cooldown. He's going to get first down, but Umpty does finish one off. Again, GL with this core three alive, but now Ayla is here alongside Meech, and this could be problems for them, but APA's he's back. back. <laughs> he's respawned, and here comes the mid laner. It's a double for APA, and they can head straight for the Baron. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if, I was like, is this going to go long enough for APA to come and just rejoin the fight? Off of the backside, what is happening in the LCS game? I think 
It's that. League they of have, Legends. Yeah. It, I mean, it's been a fun time. I'm having fun. Do you 20, guys have fun? Yeah, 28 kills now. Over one kill per minute in this game. Absolutely razor thin margins in these team fights. The start of it was the pick onto the flash with St. PA. We knew Hunter Thieves was going to flip it and watch quit. He needs to make this play happen. But Yawn bursts him as his whole team peels for him. He flashes the alt, gets the last hit. Look at the little chorus. If Core dies there, quick yeah. resets, yep. he doesn't die. That's how close this is. Umpty executes River on the back end to secure it, and it's just a bloodbath. And I just gotta call out how perfectly they CC chain quit. It was body slam into the root from yep. uh, from Yawn, into the charm from Core JJ, into a knockup from Core JJ. Everything layered pretty much perfectly there. And that is the danger when you're going in. Even with the shield bow, he couldn't survive. We're back to live though in another fight as the Falling Star is going to connect immediately oh, down on the river. And River's got nowhere to go. The bailout buys no time at all. And on the other side, another is down. Meech is gone. This could potentially just be the end. They're going to be pushing forward here. They've already got a wave. The pings are going in. Can they get another kill? Can they even try to end this game? There's no base happening right yet from Quid. He's going to try to make them come back, but I mean, this is a barrened up team. Even if they do base, it's 5 v yeah. 2 Sniper, one level 16 Crocodile. He's going to try and keep Hunter Thieves' season alive. All right, it's all up to this. It's up to Sniper. It's up to Quick. And they find the angle. Soul inbound. He's going forward, but he's CC'd up. And Quinn has got to get out of there. Sniper now trying to make something happen. But both alties are used there. Sniper's used his. Quinn still has his. But TL are focusing the Nexus Towers. They can smell the next round of the playoffs. And they're going for it. Quinn goes in. But he's down. Sniper is down. River and Meech are back, but I don't think it's going to be enough. TL with their eyes on the Nexus. They're going to take it. Three to one is the series. TL will advance in the lower bracket and make it to finals weekend. Congrats to TL. It's so exciting to see how they've evolved over playoffs, right? We were talking about how shaky they were in season, how it didn't seem like they were necessarily all on the same page as we see them hug their focus on bot side. Yawn really, really showing up in these team fights today throughout their entire playoff run has made such a massive difference for this team. Now two series away from an LCS title. They take down 100 Thieves 3-1. I'd say APA for me overperformed his expectations yes. so much. Two really solid Tlio wins. Gets hard counterpicked in this matchup. Yone versus A Soul, but still comes in clutch, cleaning up those late game fights and really just turning the scaling on. This game only lasted 28 minutes. So Team Liquid guaranteed top three, at least equaling their finish from Summer Split last year. And as I said, two series away from the title. We've talked about Scrim 100 Thieves. Is this Scrim TL? It showing up be. on stage I now? Mean, based on the bloodiness of these games, they've been able to flip a switch because they were so cautious in the regular season and they are so not cautious <laughs> in the playoffs. Well, I, th I think one of the things I'm really liking about how TL are playing is they have clearly settled on their play style. We're going to play scaling. We're going to play the yep. 5v5, but we're not going to be scared. We're not just yeah. going to back mm -hmm. off everything. If we think that we can win this fight, we're going to have confidence in our execution. We're going to have confidence to be able to get it done. We also have to talk about 100 Thieves yeah. and their run. Really young team. People were thinking they were going to be a bot four team. They finished second tied for first even in the regular season they're able to win against energy defending champions a lot of young players over on that side and a tremendous amount of promise yeah i am really really proud of this hundred thieves team i think they had such great drafts and understanding through the regular season of how they wanted to play they clicked really well i'm super excited to see how they regroup and perform in yeah, summer absolutely well, congrats to tl we're going to be joining raz and apa the victorious mid laner on stage for an interview What's up and congratulations, APA, on the series win. Thank you, thank you. What have you guys been needing? During the regular season, you guys have been pretty slow paced, but every series we've had so thus far, you guys have been really bloody as a team. Um, I think we just realized that we're actually really good in scrims. Like we have an insane winner in scrims. So we just said we're gonna play like scrims. And I think that's been like our entire goal. And I mean, to be honest, we smash everyone in scrims. What has been the breakout? Because that has been Spawn's, like, anytime he's been in front of camera, he's just like, we play better in scrims, we're a lot more bloody in scrims. That's something that he said during the regular season, but, like, what was that break point? What really pushed you guys to kind of be as bloody and take more risks? Um, I think we all had our own, like, revelations about that. Like, for me, it was game t or our second game versus 100 Thieves, when, to be honest, I had a really shit Oriana game, just to be completely <laughs> blunt about it, and I could have carried, I should have carried, but then I played just 
super, super scared, so that was my revelation. I'm sure others had like a similar thing in a different game. It was just like, once we all came to that revelation, we all just like started being aggressive like we are in scrims. And you guys are been killing it. You in particular took a sabbatical from tr trash talking during this Dignitas series. What was the reason behind it? And then also just like going to this series, just like how did it feel? I'm mean, Dick's trash. You don't need to trash talk for some. <laughs> So, like, this series, you had to lock in a little bit, so a little bit of trash talk, and then next series, we'll ramp it up. Okay, talking about ramping it up, you guys will be ramp you are now ramping it up into finals weekend. You have locked in a spot as a top three team. You just took down the first team all pro in APA, or APA, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, in quid. But then you're going to be going up against uh, both uh, C9 and FlyQuest, depending on what happens top. So you're going to be have to go in against, like, second seed and third. So your thought process on A, being able to lock in finals weekend and against the opponents, possibly. Uh, I mean, I'm super happy we made finals weekend, but like, to be honest, I don't care who we face. I think we're going to be both teams. Okay. <laughs> you guys' series is just looking, looking cleaner and cleaner. So just like any thoughts on what you guys feel like you need to be consistent at or what you need to be better at going into the next one, because it's going to be harder from there. Um, well, I think Dig or Hunter Thieves don't really have good sidelines, so I didn't have to worry about it then. But I remember FlyQuest, I was dying a lot on sideline, so I have to make sure not to be an enter in the sideline in the coming series. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, you can go back and join your team on that one. Congratulations one more time. Can we hear it for APA one more time, guys? <laughs> All right, thanks again, brother, and have thank a good you. one. You can join your team now. Actually, good call, I'll take that one from you. You don't go away from that one. We will be talking to Sniper. Oh, you actually have your own. You know what? Never mind. You could have taken that. <laughs> I do, yeah. I do. Thank you, for, thank you, Sniper, for joining me. Uh, it was a bit rough of a series, but can you just reflect on the series and overall just a split as a whole because you've had a great split yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, this series, honestly, I, I wasn't playing too good. Like, all playoffs, I was kind of just, like, choking in a way. Uh, I don't know if it was, like, because I was nervous, but uh, it just sucks because I had a really good regular season. And I thought I'd translate that into playoffs, but I guess I'm just a choker. Like, hey, I mean. Before you're too critical on yourself, what would you say is like a big learning point just for the playoffs alone? Because for you to be able to come into your first split as a rookie and then get third team all pro is a pretty significant feat. But also just like going into playoffs, can you tell me about like what were some of the changes you have felt like you needed to make and like what are your major learning points? Oh uh, yeah, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I just learned that there's like no point in getting inside of your head when all you, well, when all I've been doing this split was just like having fun and just kind of being myself. But in playoffs, like, I, I kind of just like completely just lost that mentality, you know, and then I started playing bad. But it was definitely a very good learning experience for sure, I think. Uh, I definitely learned a lot. I appreciate that. Any words you have to just like, because, your guys' team has been like a special team. You guys have talked about uh, the fact that, you know, you guys were underdogs, being able to like break expectations, the teammates that you've had along the way. Any like shout out to the teammates, the organization, even just the fans here have been supporting you today? I mean, yeah, like I, I honestly wouldn't be here without you guys. So I appreciate like every single one of you guys watching our games and supporting 100 Thieves. And uh, I mean, shout out to my family for being very supportive, to my teammates. Um, I let them down, but I also let myself down. So there's a lot to reflect for next split. I don't feel like they think you let them down at all after a split like this. So thank you again, 100%. Congratulations on what has been a beautiful split for you guys. And summer split feels like it's going to be a lot better. Appreciate you for taking the interview. Yes, sir. It will 100%. And we're going to be sending this one back to the lounge, guys. Thank you. See you guys. <laughs> See you. Bye, Bye Sniper. <laughs> Come on. Uh, he always has such a good attitude. Yeah. Uh, love that kid. But welcome, Yawn and Umpty. Congratulations. <laughs> Another dub here. Um, I mean, Yawn, you guys are slamming uh, Isaiah Rakan all over the place. What gives? Um, the main thing is just the way 100 Thieves play is, like, very... Not one-dimensional, but they have a very stylistic way of playing, which uh -huh. is, like, very dive-heavy. So you're, like... I don't think they can punish us in lane that hard, and we can go through it. For example, we messed up pretty hard in the last game, but we managed to get it out of it. Mostly, I don't think they... I think they're pretty decent at team fighting, but their laning phase is not as strong as others. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. 
Why are you so confident now? Like, reg <laughs> I don't know, playoff yawn and regular season yawn seem different. Does it feel different to you, or is it just happening? Uh, I did shift my mindset a little bit towards that last week. Okay. Towards where I should have a bigger ego and try to do more than what I wanted to do during the mm -hmm. regular season. Mostly, I just wanted to, like, beat everyone as well. Okay. Why? All the cringe drama that's been happening is, like, very annoying to listen to. It's, that's, like, one of the one of the other things in, like, because we didn't have the best regular season as well. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, like, happy with how it went. Yeah, and Umpty, I know you're always, like, a pretty aggressive player. But mm -hmm. the regular season Team Liquid was really low in terms of bloodiness in their games. True, yeah. Whereas now... It's like maybe the bloodiest. I, I got run stats we've ever right had. now checking actually on LCS overall. Yeah. If, if we are top in the world, because we've had just bloody games yeah. all over. But playoffs. you guys are like over one combined kills per minute. The game three had like 50 kills. Even game four had like 40 kills. Like, has there been a mindset shift or something that's unlocked your guys' ability to play so aggressively? Mm, mm, I think I can tell you guys at once. Well, it's like, I think we just. At the regular season, we were same at the screams, like kind of bloody games we played at mm -hmm. the screams. And, but we just didn't play at the screams, like kind of like, oh, we don't have to do this. I think we can just win at the slowly, slowly. But now, like, I, mean, I think our all the mindset has changed. We can do this group. We can do this war. We can just eat all. Just don't give them all, like kind of this thing. Then, so they're very annoying, right? So yeah. they are now fight back. Then we're <laughs> we're going to play the bloody game right now. <laughs> it's going to be the scream now. Because it's kind of emotional things. Like yeah. we are just take touching their emotions, then they're like, you guys take this a lot? Like, kind of this thing, then we just fight back, fight back, fight back. Like, kind of. And we just think that's our game. I, I love that game. It is so fun to watch that game. The the touching of the emotions is really good. Uh, honestly, yeah. how do you guys... Catch that Gromp River. <laughs> yeah. take it. Are, are, are either of you going to get in on this, this all chat game? Speaking of, like, touching on emotions and, and getting in people's heads. Or are you like, you know what? That's APA's game. Nah, I, I don't like it that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Focus yeah. on the game. Yeah, that's quite like kind of AP special, by the way. Uh -huh. But I cannot join, bro. I'm from Korea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot join that. That's very hard to me because like I think like kind of they are to me it's like very respectful players, like pro players are. So uh -huh. I cannot do that. But mm. to me, it's like AP is an alien. Me. Yeah. <laughs> He's an alien to me. <laughs> All right, well, we've got some extra news here. Jan, you won player of the series this time around. I think last time we had Impact, and Impact was saying, no, give it to Jan. We should have given it to Jan. So here we go this time around. You did yeah. 1,100 damage per minute. Do those stats mean anything to you, or is it just like you feel like you played well or you didn't? Uh, I've been definitely playing a lot better. I think that last uh, second game was up. I should have been able to carry, but mm. I was just not as focused as the other games. Because I, I could have easily taken over that game as well. Oh, uh, the Tom Kench taking your first Penta. <laughs> what happened? It's a smolder Penta, I didn't though. realize. Yeah? I mean, I kind of realized, I'm like, it's fine. I don't care that much. <laughs> I looked at their death timer, like, oh, it's a Penta. It's, I don't care. Can we have yeah. the game or not? And then you couldn't. But then you, you bought your time for the... the another, I got another one. Yeah. I like Yawn, but I think if we play smolder, we should reduce the damage. Like, it's a 100, 1,100, right? Uh -huh. Let's take some damage, like a 900 now. I I think think he should yeah. be minus. I think smolder is actually one of the lower damage. Huh? Damage. Should be. Is she? Is it? Should be one of my lower damage. Bro, I saw the, a lot of matches. He was always like seven, 17k or something. Depends on yeah. how many fights yeah. you get. Yeah. But this one was like a decent yeah. amount. You get about 70% credit for everything you do on Smolder. Yeah, how about that? 70%. <laughs> yeah. You did 63,000 damage in that 63. game that was like. Free. And you're saying oh, lower a damage chance. I, like, <laughs> I was lying. We fought more than I thought. <laughs> I thought we'd actually fight that much. Mm. So I have a question though on, on you're talking about playing more confidently and, and you know wanting to do more. Is that more in your individual play or more in talking with your front line and your teammates? Uh, more individually, but then mm. now I like actually try to say what I want and to do and need, and then I'll just get another like communication back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely taking more of time to like communicate. Mm. But not like a, not like the top, not at the top of the board of the talking part. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I feel like because I'm from LCK, right? I know all the AD calls like a lot because I played a lot. But Yon's call is being like a LCK good AD players. So I think he's growing very well to me, improving. Mm. I feel like it's a very good way. Actually, for Umpty, if we're looking ahead at the FlyQuest uh, Cloud9 matchup, I also want to ask you on the junglers. Not not on, you know, how you're going to fight the junglers, but how is Blabber going to fight Inspired? For, for our next uh, matchup, is it going to be as bloody? Uh, 
actually, can I say it as an honest? Because it can be like kind of trash talk. Yeah, be honest. <sighs> I think inspired beats Blaber very a lot to me. To be honest, I think Blaber is a. I now I just like plays with play with him a lot now, right? So I'm just being honest. Like I don't think Blaber is a good player in now. Right now, mm -hmm. because I okay. but I feel Inspire is a very good jungler. So I think in the mind game and he's, he's playing the way Inspire is a very good jungler. So I think he's gonna beat Blaber. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> am I fine? Zoom, right? zoom in on this. <laughs> am, am I fine, Yon? <laughs> no, Inspire's ego is gonna go off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Am I, am, I, am I gonna well, bet? To I mean, LCS either, either way. Or? Well, you're gonna play whoever loses that series. So if Blabber does lose, then you're probably you're happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm more happy than that. Yeah, and if Inspire comes, yeah, I don't care. That's gonna be the line default kind of something. So it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's confidence, right? Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the bracket we have remaining, right? We have. It's hype. We have three teams left. We got FlyQuest versus Cloud9 tomorrow. Winner goes to finals. Loser plays you guys on the Saturday. What are your, what's your confidence level now to, to win the whole thing? Oh, uh, like kind of fake confidence, I guess. I don't know why, but I just like feels like I can just do more better and better. Mm -hmm. Like kind of, uh, I think they're good, but I can do more better than them. Like kind of this confident. I don't know where it is coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but I just feel confident a lot. All maybe, right. maybe solo queue? I don't know. <laughs> if, uh, if you had to think about what your coach, Spawn, is going to yell at you the most for, <laughs> for this series, <laughs> what, what do you think he, he is going to say that you need to improve? Uh, maybe this is supposed to be Rainover and Spawn is gonna say to me, just maybe think about the uh, small wins a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> Today, today's one especially, because I just called a lot of like throwing skills maybe, uh -huh. because I throw with the Bolivar, throw with the Jax, throw with the Lee, like kind of three times or four times at the game. <laughs> and throw away your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like kind of, yeah. It's okay, I'm gonna be safe because I win the series, but if I lose the series, I maybe I just get I booked the ticket already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should not be Jake then. <laughs> yeah, saw fine though, because he won the series. Yeah, we uh, won, easy. <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah, really exciting one. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to next weekend as, as well. And I think that's actually gonna do it for us today. We will be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for Cloud9 versus FlyQuest. And Blabber, did you hear that? <laughs> They're, they're talking. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to play you first. He wants to play you. Yeah. Uh, honestly, super excited for that one. What about you? Absolutely, man. Who, who do you think is going to win? Who do I think is going to win tomorrow? <sighs> I'm such a C9 homer, man. I'm going to say C9 3 2. Yeah. That doesn't mean they can't win the split. You never know. Yeah. FlyQuest, TL, anyone can win. Yeah. I think lo lower bracket is a little bit OP when you get to play back to back days at the end. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it does, uh, does kind of amp you up. Honestly, I think I'm gonna predict uh, Cloud9 also. Oh. I think we're both on the other side. Now we're now people now people hate us. They're back. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought we were throwing, but I, I guess I guess. I think they're running the music. Just toss to the end. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought I did. Now let's send it over to the LCS challenger. There we go. I thought you're holding for something, Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 He's going for the engage alongside Core. Yon's on a Kelly spree. Hundred thieves are already done. And Thailand Beach just trying to head to the hill. Good, 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 good fight, good fight. Has ult. Can we look the see prom? Look for Khan. Hey, look top. Look Zion. Look Zion. Look Zion. Look Jix. No, no flash Jix. Jix no flash Jix. Zion flash. Jix no flash Jix. I cannot. I can flash. Nice. I don't like breathing anyway. Yeah, dredge line there starts off the fight. Impacts him at the front line, but the burst goes through on River. They drop him, and Core JJ is going to follow up and engage. There's the Mega Inferno Bomb damage on the two, and Sniper has to get away. Thanks to the Sterex Gage. Meech goes to the killing spree, and he flies into the back line for the assassination. A double kill on Yacht, as Core is still trying to get away. Sniper kills him, and Meech escapes off to the. Zix. Zix. I can maybe chase. Oh, Meech. Go down, 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 Meech. Go down,
The jaws are closing in. They find Quinn, and they're on to him already. Quinn is down. He's been shut down. But in goes River. Crescent Guard Poppy trying to take out Yon. Can't quite do it. Sniper's on the run. 100 thieves are from. I'm going to go. Another smolder penta kill, guys. You're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. We kill the left first. Left first. Left first. Okay, we're going to the flash. Tell him the flash. He's going to win. Yeah, he's going to win. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. Guys, shoot the river. Left on, guys. Left on. Guys, left on. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Wait, do it. 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 And River's got nowhere to go. The bailout buys no time at all. And on the other side, another is down. Meech is gone. This could potentially just be the end. They're going to be pushing forward here. They've already got away. Maybe end. End the game. End the game. Focus. Focus. Yeah, GG. Not done yet. Yeah? yeah. Not done. Not done yet, right? Yeah, not done yet. Sorry. Guys! Sorry, my bad. I just threw one game. <laughs> this series, you had to lock in a little bit, so a little bit of trash talk, and then next series, we'll ramp it up.